Hey, what is up everyone? Today we take a look at the MOA GE150, the super tiny latest addition to the GE series by MOA. So it's the mini brother of the GE200 and the GE300. Let's check it out. Now, it is absolutely microscopic, as you can see. It's almost pedal territory, <laughs> not floor modeler. It is, it weighs nothing, like, it is just, it's paper, really. It's not even 500 grams, I would say, like, no, 300 or so, it's so light. However, it is really solid, just like the other MOA products that I've tested so far. It feels, it feels not cheap. It is affordable, but does it doesn't feel cheap. The back is made of plastic, unlike the other units. However, the front and even the expression pedal are metal, which is very nice. Nice and clicky. Also the knobs, everything is nice, nothing to complain. The layout is very simple, very straightforward. Uh, I mean, there's nothing, nothing confusing here. So yeah, as I said, it is very affordable. This thing goes for around 170 euros here in Germany. Now the question that came to my mind when I when I got this thing or ordered this thing is what are people gonna use this for? What situations are suitable for this thing? Yeah, I'm going to try to answer this question in this video. Now I've tried to imagine different kinds of scenarios. Live, at home, recording or just jamming around or as a travel companion if you are I don't know, on vacation or just somewhere on the road. Where can you use it? Now, live, I would say no, but it is definitely possible if you're really into it because you've got everything you need for that. You have your line out here and you can individually select if you want a cab simulation on the output or not. So technically, you can run one signal through your power amp and through a cab to monitor on stage and the other output goes directly to front of house. I mean, it's it's a floor thing with foot switches and um, an expression pedal, which is supposed to be used by your foot. However, you don't have any assignment switch or just the possibility to turn on or off effects within a preset. That's just not possible, which is I don't know, it's not, not a huge bummer. I mean, this thing is so small where you just can't put any switches except for the preset up and down switch, which are also the tuner and the looper. Yes, this thing has a looper. So you have basically everything you need. And I can imagine if you are a guitarist playing in some combo band and all you need is a simple clean sound and in one song you're going to switch to a slightly overdriven sound for your solo and then back to clean. Um, you don't need assignment switches, you can just change your preset up and down and you're good. The GE150 as your jamming companion at home. Yes, I can definitely see this as a little thing to noodle around if you don't want to turn on your valve head or your computer setup, whatever. Plug this in, plug your guitar in and have a jam absolutely suitable for that. What's really cool is it even has a drum machine, which doesn't sound too bad. There are a few patterns or a few um, beats on there and combined with the looper, you can do some very, very cool stuff, which is very nice. However, I must address right here. There is a problem because the tap tempo of your effect, let's say delay, will not match the tempo that you set your rhythm um, beats to it is just stupid um, so you have to go back and tap tempo your effect to the beat but it's still not perfectly on time what this is definitely not for is putting this next to other pedals on the pedal board it is not an effect thing the effects are quite poor if you would compare them to real solid expensive pedals that you would have anyway on your pedal board. So just forget that. The GE150 as your recording interface. Mm, yes and no. I would say yes, if you are, let's say on the road, you just have your laptop and you wanna record some demos on the fly. This is definitely very, very cool because you have all the guitar tones that you would need to 
put down some ideas. However, I would not use this sound if I was to put out some, some original music uh, for fine recordings. It's just not, it's just not quite there for uh, sound-wise. Now, speaking of sound, what does it sound like? Considering the price, it doesn't sound bad at all. So for 170 euros, you can't do much wrong here. I think that is, that is the, the strong part of this. I know that these simulations are probably a lot of work and it's very easy for me to criticize them. But I'm going to say it again, these sounds are not quite there yet on a level that we are now used in almost 2020 because of those absolutely crushing software plugins like Overloud THU or the Neural DSP archetypes. And it's just not up there and it's just a benchmark that was set by those plugins because you have, I think there are like 50 amps in here and honestly, they all sound the same. It's like, it's clean crunch and heavy distortion, but it feels like it's the same amp, just in different gain stages all over again. The similar thing goes for the effects for most of the cabs as well, and especially for the microphone um, selection because the microphones just, the microphones sound all the same. So all the same. There's no, no difference at all in character. It is just a slight EQ difference. Why do they still bother in putting so much on a unit that is this small? Instead of focusing, let's say on, you know, 10 really, really solid amps, a handful of really, really good cabinet impulses and a handful of quality effects and put this on this tiny board, quality over quantity. That's something I'm really, really allergic to. A shitload of stuff which individually just sucks instead of having a few things that are by themselves really nice. I mean, uh, it's just a world trend, I would say, of our society. A lot of shitty stuff instead of a few good quality things. So much about my you know, general thoughts about the GE 150. Um, we're going to sit down now and um, I will show you the navigation, which is semi-ideal, I would say. It's not bad, it's not perfect either, but you know, you have to keep in mind it's a small unit. You have limited buttons and uh, navigation tools. I'm not going to use it via USB. I'm going to use the line out uh, because I have my monitors on my interface, on my Scarlett 2i2. And by the way, that's something I forgot to mention. You can load in up to 10 custom cab impulses in the unit, which is really, really nice. I mean, for this size, you can load in your own cab impulses. And that is something that can make the unit a lot better because you have the possibility to make it more your own, I would say. And um, because of that, I'm going to use a impulse response in Overloud on my computer. If the unit gives you the possibility to use cab impulses, why shouldn't you use it to demonstrate what it can do? Um, especially for referencing to my other sounds that I usually use on my channel. So you can get an idea how this uh, sounds. Something I want you to pay attention to is a certain throatiness that the unit has. And this this throatiness in, is in every amp sim that is on here. And that kind of shows that the simulation is it's the same for every amp. It's always the same and they just did a little variation in EQ uh, shaping. Anyway, enough talking. So let's uh, sit down and i show you guys around. Okay, so here we are in front of the G150. Um, as you can see, I have a distortion uh, preset made for you. And uh, this is what it sounds like. Now keep in mind, it is running through a custom cap IR. <laughs> Now that sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, 
speaking of that throatiness that I was talking about earlier, this is it. I don't know if you can hear it, but I think it's pretty obvious. And it's kind of in all the simulations, more or less. But apart from that, the simulation is really good and the sound is absolutely, absolutely usable and fat. Now, um, let me show you the navigation, which is really easy. So there's your master volume, nothing special about that. Hold the tuner, there you go. Uh, here's the looper, which I'm not going to show you because I have my foot on the floor and not here on the desk. Um, uh, play. So to change stuff, uh, you have this dial here. As you can see, this light is now brighter and you can select the block where you are at very simply like that. So let's go to the amp and um, with this button, you can adjust the value. So now I can change the amp. <laughs> clicking and turning you get to the individual parameters very very easy straightforward I think they, they've done that pretty well so now we have a pretty much stock preset with the built-in IR so I'm not using anything else than the mower and what it comes with so this is what it sounds like <laughs> There's a throatiness, but maybe it's, that's just me. Now let me show you what happens when you go to the drum machine. As you can see, this is the tempo now of the, um, the preset. The rhythm has a totally different tempo so you would have to sync that manually and it's just super annoying so it doesn't match up and it doesn't make much sense can be fixed probably with an update I would say there's not that much to show you honestly I think the effects are okay they do their job. Um, it's nothing spectacular, really. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed this video about the MOA GE150. If you want to see more of those videos in the future, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Um, make sure to check out my Patreon page if you want some more candy along with the videos. And speaking of Patreon, as always a big thanks goes to my patrons who are supporting me and my channel, it really means a lot and uh, it helps me to buy stuff like strings and stuff. Tell me in the comments what you think of the G150. Uh, I think it's a cool little gimmick uh, to put in your backpack when you are traveling. Thank you so much, take care, I will see you next time.